Thank you for returning for episode 3. Uh, in this episode I'm going to finish off the last of the bedways here underneath the B-way um, and we'll see what else we can get to. Hopefully I can also get the clamping ways under the tailstock in the middle uh, machined as well. As with the other side there's quite a quite a curve here on the edge so first thing I'm going to need to do is go along and just relieve out this this portion here to give me a gutter for the scraper to, to exit into. As a special bonus to this channel's number one fan, Nico, the correct tool for this job is going to be his favourite tool, the angle grinder. Okay, that feels better. So as before, the next step is just taking that lip off using a single-edged file. The first scraping pass is really just to give a texture so that you get a better get a picture with the bluing. So here we get to the part of the series where we need to start making additional tools to be able to work on this tool. The thickness of the front way needs to be measured relative to both of the angled guideways. To do that I need a little mini v-block to sit on these angled guideways that I can then use the micrometer against. Now the only v-blocks I have are much too large so we get to the part of the uh, episode now where we start tool making to help us do a job. I've got this bar of mehanite cast iron so what I'll be doing, I'll cut off, a, cut off a short length cut two sides flat and parallel to one another and then cut in a V-way and then scrape the V-way and scrape the top parallel to the, to the V-way and that's going to be the tool. Unfortunately the dual bandsaw had a gearbox failure so I'm stuck with uh, cutting this by hand. I cheated. While you weren't looking I cut it with the angle grinder. Now I'm just squaring up the ends. So I need to cut out about a 9.5 millimeter um, corner out of my piece of cast iron to fit on top of the uh, onto the ways nicely. So that's the vice trimmed in within a tenth of a thousandth of an inch.
Okay, there's our tool set up. I first thought that I'd be cutting a flat across the top of this but now I realize it's better to leave it as a circle because that gives me a more definite point to measure against and takes out any errors I'm, I would introduce by not having the, uh, the top parallel to the two ways. So I'll leave it like this. Um, what I do still need to do is scrape it in to make sure I've got the angle correct to the uh, angle of the bed which may not be exactly 45 degrees. Okay, give me something to scrape off. Once again, these first couple of passes are really just to roughen up the surface that prints better. So if we look at the leaderboard, we've now made a bead lock. So I'm starting to measure my way along the ways. Looks like the thin end is down at the tailstock end, and we're already up. Wow, um, 65 microns to this point. So it looks like it's going to be quite a bit to scrape. Zero at the tail stop, plus 30, plus 50, plus 60, 50, 30, 30. Some rough scraping at the start, just get some metal off. The underside of this way is getting close to, close to flat. Um, so I'm going to be looking at finish scraping it. But before I uh, get too far ahead on that, I really need to check to make sure whether those two V-ways are in a nice perpendicular plane to one another. If you can imagine if those angled out you would end up with the with the weight getting higher and higher and the saddle tipping as it rode up the front way. To check that alignment I've set up the sliding v-block at the end here and zeroed a dial test indicator so now we'll just move that systematically along the bed and measure the deviation. The first block is still at zero. At this point, it looks like we're up two ten thousandths of an inch, five microns. What does that measurement mean? Now, it could mean that we start off at a certain width, have these V guide ways expand out slightly through the middle and then come back to exactly the same angle or width as the, as, the, as the far end. A second explanation would be that this, this bed is not perfectly flat and that there's some slight sag in the middle, which is not that unlikely. This is not a terribly stiff straight edge. So it's quite likely that the way I've been holding it and touching off, that it may, may well be slightly bowed, which would then cause a slight dish in this way. At the end of the day, I really don't have the ability to measure to perfection whether we've got a dish here or an expansion through here. I'm just going to accept it as it is. As the lathe wears, this is the area that's going to wear the most. 
So the area that's currently slightly high is the area that will also see the highest wear. So hopefully we'll get a slight improvement in accuracy over time before it starts wearing out and the accuracy starts to decrease. I had a question in the comments section asking me why I didn't use the thick portion of the straight edge for touching off under the ways there. Now as you can see the, the thin edge comes to a point so I can get up right to the, to the edge of a way whereas this side has been left rough. It was obviously machined out of a solid billet of cast iron but I don't have a sharp edge on either of the um, broad um, faces so therefore I can't use this edge for touching off up against a 90 degree edge. The next check I've been doing is looking at the actual thickness to tell me how far I need to go on the on the underside of that way and I use a gauge block underneath the way to even out the, the valleys and peaks of scraping. Getting close to the final scraping on the bed we start off down around zero have a slight rise up to about 7 microns, back down to slightly below 0, and then up to 7 again at this end. So when we touch off we should be seeing two prints, and once I've got those scraped level, then we'll be into final scraping for points. This is flipped over end to end to what you see before, saw before, and the print is what we're expecting. The print has contact in this area and in this area. Is, and that agrees with the measurements that were taken. When I first started, I scraped the feet to a single plane. Now that I've scraped the top of the ways, um, they're not parallel. The plane of the feet is tilted both in this direction, this being high, and front to back, front uh, back being high. So what I'll do next is mount this on the mill and just skim the feet and then scrape them in parallel. You may wonder why I'm using such a small end mill, a 10 millimeter. Uh, basically by using a small end mill, it takes away the tramming errors. So in case, if I used, did one large pass with a large surface mill, if I had a slight tramming error, then I could get quite a ma major dishing in the surface. So this kind of minimizes that. I've still got some alignment issues that I'll have to solve on the, the mahu and also the clamping wasn't ideal. I wasn't able to uh, completely correct the errors in the feet. I've about half the, the variation, maybe slightly less. I've, now I've got a, a slope on this foot in this direction and a slope on the other foot in this direction. Back to scraping. That's now the end of the bed scraping. Uh, feet are now parallel with the with the top ways within about 8 to 10 microns. I can't seem to get any closer than that. The next issue is the thickness of the tailstock clamping surfaces. They're all over the place. As you can see, the machining of those tailstock clamping ways is pretty horrible. From a low spot here, or a thinnest section here, we go to nearly a millimetre thicker in this, in this uh, area. I mean, some of that might be paint, but we're going to have to get in there with a T uh, slot cutter and mill those right out to make them nice and even. Okay, this 
still about a quarter of a millimeter difference, so I'll do a second pass. The area between about here and here hasn't cleaned up yet. Um, I'll need to do a third pass, but all the rest of it's looking good. The eagle eyed among you will have noticed that I couldn't actually machine all the way to the end of the, the undercut uh, because I've only got 400 millimeters of travel and this is about 470 millimeters long. I stop about here. Now I could go to all the effort of moving this over, resetting it up, re-tramming everything back in, but when you look at it, I can move the tailstock to about here and I don't realistically see any, any need to go any closer than that. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. Considering it's only the clamping of the tailstock, I'm very happy with these results. This is uh, microns. The biggest deviation is about 8 microns, which considering it's only for clamping the tailstock should leave a, a very nice, smooth, easy clamping. Well, that's going to be it for this episode, and that's the end of the work on the bed. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.